And welcome in to a hump day edition of the Backstage Pass, always live and in living color here on Facebook and live on YouTube. And of course, everywhere you can find us, wherever you stream or download your podcast out there. Uh, Brandon Morrell, Kirsty Krause, as we continue the countdown to CRS 2022, February 23rd to 25th at the Omni mm-hmm. Hotel. The schedule's full and probably going to have two or three others join us before it's it's all set. Hanging out with the great Shenandoah, uh, of course, Exile and John Barry, and a whole lot more coming up here in just a few weeks too as well great to be back here on a wednesday and of course next week uh, february 10th the great john michael montgomery is coming here on the backstage pass and a whole lot more uh pleased to welcome in our guest today on hump day nashville recording artist and a guy who's about to go on tour with the great tim mcgraw uh brandon davis to the backstage pass it's brandon brandon hey brandon what's going on <laughs> How <are you> doing, brandon? <laughs> Man, just hanging in there. Pleased to have you. Well, hey, tell me about this, because, man, uh, still young in your career and, and a father, I believe, a father of four. Uh, still there. you still living in Chattanooga, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I like that story. Hey, tell me about this, because, uh, you know, people always talk about second chances in life. And I think we all wake up every day thanking the good Lord above for the roof over our head, you know, gas in our car, mom's apple pie, whatever it is out there, too, as well. Uh, being a father, I just became a new father myself, too. My daughter's almost two years old, so I love her and just can't uh, believe today 22 months has gone by. So it's amazing to wake up, take your head off the pillow, and believe in second or third chances or you know whatever. Uh, I guess they say a cat has nine lives. Tell me about this story because uh, you had a kind of a scare a few years ago and really this kind of got the music thing continuing to go and chasing your dream. Tell, tell the audience about that a little bit. Man, I'm... <sighs> I've had music in, in my blood, thanks to my father and his dad. And it's something I've been around my whole life, but it's one of those things that you see everybody doing it. You know, there's so many other people doing it, but you don't know how to do it yourself. Like I know how to play, I know how to write songs, but how do you take that and make it something that is next level? How do you take it and make it something that's your day job? And I, you know, I didn't know how to, and didn't really put all the effort that I, that I could have into it. Up and up until 2019, it was a hobby. It was what I did on the side. It's what I did with the family. But I did get in a head-on collision with a distracted driver back in 2019. Had to have life-saving surgery. My wife was uh, pregnant with our fourth child at the time. We already had three running around crazy at the house. But it's one of those moments that kind of hit me. Like, look, everything that you had and everything you hadn't done mm-hmm. have just been gone. Like there there was no opportunities left if I let that be what took me. And I didn't want that to be the case. I didn't want to sit here and tell my kids every single day, like, hey, when you grow up, you do whatever you want to do, you know, dream big, go after your goals and don't let nobody stop you. But I'm sitting here not doing it myself. So that that was a big turning point because that that's a you know, kind of hey, get up off of your tail end. If you got something you want to do, do it. Yeah. Uh, it, and it's, it's one of those stories that definitely I took to heart. And man, I, I feel just lucky to be a father every day now for the first time and, and uh, just try to give it all I have to my daughter every day. Just put food on the table and just grind because as I always say, and I tell people, it's not coming to you. You got to go grab it out there. There's money don't grow on trees, as we all know. And I tell you, man, you know, I can I just commend you for a great um, album. Uh, one of my favorite songs on the Alpha EP was Destiny off of uh, the 2021 self-titled EP that you guys put out. Talk to me about uh, just that EP, how excited you guys were to get music out to your fans. And I mean, even what Cowboys are for, my God, man, just a great, great uh, five song EP. I appreciate that, man. Uh, To be honest, when we first started this, we had no clue how to do any of it. All I knew is that like used to, if I wanted to record something, we got the band together up at the, up the Opry house we had in Birchwood or up in my dad's studio. And we just started all playing it together. But we were right in the middle of COVID when a lot of this geared up <clears throat> and we didn't have, I didn't have a band. I didn't have really a whole lot of contacts. And my wife actually learned Pro Tools from YouTube just to figure out how to record my vocals. And we made connections with a lot of producers over the course of that first year. And through that and a lot of uh, a lot of networking to a lot of different musicians in the process, we were able to pull off, I mean, a great number of songs in a year's time. I think we've got 12 sitting on the books right now and that EP came along and man, I, I started really thinking like, what are some of the best songs we've sat down and wrote with folks? And what are the songs that really speak true to what we're doing and tell this story and destiny 
that was that was at the top of the list and that was the one song that my wife wasn't able to record she wasn't able to know about it she wasn't there when i wrote it and i'm not a secretive person when it comes to me and her because we're the ones that can't keep christmas presents a secret all the way to christmas we're <laughs> opening two weeks early and to keep i kept this a secret for about three months time and had to give it a code name and everything. Any anytime I needed to practice the song or talk about it, I had to speak with this other nickname for the song that she wouldn't know what it was talking about. And the nickname was Recipe. Mm -hmm. And that was the closest we could get to the word destiny without her catching on. And she said, Okay, I've got to know what is recipe. I was like, You will find out when you find out. I promise it's worth it. She <laughs> said, Well, why do you call it recipe? Is it actually called recipe? I was like, It's called recipe because it's still cooking. Like when it's done. When it's done, I promise it'll be worth it. That's a good one. Yeah. So it, it was it was the song that told our story, told how we got here, how the music started, and how big of a part, you know, not just her, but the kids and life in general just had to factor into it all. And you know, with that's a good segue into the question I wanted to ask you is that, you know, your wife was really pushing you, really a big hand at it. And now just looking on your social media, you're I feel like we're laughing with you in these videos. Talk to us about how important social media has been to be able to still connect to the fans and grow your fan base in this time and, and how your whole family gets involved. I mean, the crazy part is when we first geared up, I mean, that's all we really had. I mean, I'd started playing some local shows at the time, but those all got kind of tossed to the wayside because COVID had just kicked up. When you're in the middle of a pandemic and you can't go out and actually play shows for people, you go to the internet because that's the only source you got. And lucky for us, everybody was spending a lot more time in front of their phones whenever we actually, you know, kind of got kicked off. But she was the driving force behind even making that happen because she found TikTok. She found, you know, all these new ways that we could start integrating with fans and actually making this grow. And if she hadn't have done that, you know, who who knows where I'd be sitting today. I'd probably still be sitting at a desk job and designing fire sprinkler systems. Mm -hmm. But Fortunately, she uh, she cracked the code, and the biggest thing for us is that we now we just spend our days sharing life around the house, you know. And it's a very musical household, just like what I grew up in. So I've got a two year old and a six year old that are constantly singing all the time. I think my two year old knows my songs better than I do. I but, saw a video of him like singing the words to the surprise song. You already heard it. You yep. already heard it. Oh yeah, that. He picks up on it so quick too. Like I, I can show the kid the song one time and the next time I play it on the radio, he's mm -hmm. just ah, getting into it. Well, and he knows future music so, in the blood, hey, maybe. I don't know. If, that, if that's where they gravitate towards, so be it. My daughter's already got a little notebook she writes her songs Aww. in. She carries around a little pink guitar. I'm not allowed to watch though. Whenever she plays, <laughs> I have to go to a different room. I, I'm only allowed to watch the videos that she makes because okay. I'm very nervous. Oh. So, but no, if it weren't for the fact that that we had the access like we did, you know, there, there's no telling where things would have went. But mm -hmm. having social media as this outlet to just say, hey, this is us. This is how we how we function. We're not always functional. Sometimes the dysfunctional is just the right way to make it function. And, you know, come join us in our organized chaos and have a good time. <laughs> I think there's a song in all of that as well. But we <laughs> certainly enjoy watching your videos just as much as listening to your music. Yeah, it's and, and I tell you what, the one I was talking about before the show with with Brandon, the kitchen. Of course, we'll talk about that minus you, and he, he dived in a little holiday music too. One more Christmas Eve, we'll get into that in just a little bit. But hey, you got that guitar close? Time to play one here on the uh, backstage pass. It's Brandon Davis, and you can check him out at uh, brandondavismusic.com. And of course, we got a big tour to talk about with the legend Tim McGraw. He's about to embark on a huge tour with Tim. And there's a connection with that Tim McGraw. If a lot of folks and viewers just don't know what we're talking about, we'll get to that here in just a little bit more on the uh, backstage pass here, uh, presented by Bangtail Whiskey, Hank Jr. Productions, and of course our friends over at MitchMax.com. Brandon, it's all yours, man. Dealer's right, well, choice. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'll tell you what. You talked about the kitchen. I've got I've got a couple <laughs> that nobody's heard, so I'm, I'm going to play a couple for y'all tonight that I don't think very many people have had a chance to hear, but. I love the kitchen because that's that's where all this really started at. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about where it all kind of came from, and not, it's singing in the kitchen, singing on the countertops, and kids running, jumping on your dogs, and all. So, <laughs> sing, uh, sing a little tune called the kitchen. Here we go.
They were last car drivers cutting sharp around turns three and four. Racing around that island in her tennis shoes on that awkward kitchen floor. They were superheroes protecting mama from monsters in the free. Laying hide and seek underneath that sink and even stay cause daddy did. Growing up we found it was built for more than just serving up fried chicken. Cause the recipe we wrote about the life we are living was cooked up in the kitchen. It's where my mama breathed the good book. Daddy was playing all them old George Strait songs on the radio. Us kids, we'd sing along. It's where we laughed and loved and sent prayers up for all that we've been given. Yeah, the recipe we wrote about the life we are living was cooked up in the kitchen. More double door of me, many things get painful for me. If his walls could talk, there's no telling all the paid stories they leave. Those barefoot dancing, late night jamming concert countertops. They painted a picture in our mind that I'll never be forgotten. Swear my mama read the good book. Daddy was playing all them old George Strait songs on the radio. Us kids, we'd sing along. It's where we laughed and loved and sent prayers up for all that we've been getting. Yeah, the recipe we wrote about the life we're living was cooked up in the kitchen. Many late night homework came out Saturday morning breakfast club. It's a heart and soul of this old house in the root of all our love. It's where my mama breathed the good book. Daddy was playing all them old George Strait songs on the radio. And us kids, we'd sing along. It's where we laughed and loved. Set prayers up for all that we've been doing. Yeah, the recipe we wrote about the life we're living. All the recipe we wrote about the life we're living was cooked up in the kitchen. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mesh base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Kraus, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And back here on the show again with Kirsty Kraus. Again, the countdown to CRS underway February 23rd to 25th. The Omni Hotel schedule is full and probably going to add uh, probably two or three more. I don't know how we're going to fit them all in, but uh, it's going to be will. one media room and we're going to just mm -hmm. fit them all in there at the uh, <laughs> backstage pass curtain. And of course, everything's set up there. Uh, just some of the great Shannon Doe is going to drop by. 
uh, John Barry, uh, the band Exile, and a whole lot more too. Dallas Remington, and just uh, a great week in Nashville playing, no doubt about it too as well. Back here with the uh, recording artist uh, Brandon Davis. Anybody named Brandon? You gotta love that too, no doubt. Uh, <laughs> hey, speaking of this too, love the song. We talked about the man, just a great the kitchen, <laughs> great performance, and uh, you're just a natural. You make it seem uh, flawless, man. It's just an easy way to, to pick and play here. Uh, hey, tell me about this big tour coming up uh, April 29th. I believe it starts. And you guys are man, chock full with legend Tim McGraw and I believe um, Alexander Kay, who's been on this show and oh. one of the fantastic artists, special guest Russell Dickerson. I mean, it's a big deal for you. And of course, I know you're yeah. still early in your career, but man, the TikTok stuff we talked about and you taking off big time. It uh, looks like it's going to begin in Rogers, Arkansas, April 29th, and then St. Louis, Missouri, April 30th. Tell us more about this and just an extreme, huge talent lineup that you're going to be with. And can we expect The Kitchen to be on the set list? <laughs> I don't know. You have to wait and oh. see. Oh. <laughs> yeah, wait and see. <laughs> so what's happening for you on a, in April? Uh, the biggest moment of my life, to be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah. been, I've been listening to Tim McGraw since you know I was old enough to know what country music was. And to see a man that is, you know, as well grounded and so stapled in this in this music industry and all the accomplishments that he's done and the fact that, you know, number one, he knows who I am. That that was the big that was the big part for me was just like not only am I talking to Tim McGraw, it's just the fact that I'm talking to Tim McGraw because Tim McGraw actually knows who I am. <laughs> and he's given me the opportunity of a lifetime going on this tour and we're getting to see 17 different cities in a course of six weeks and traveling to all these amphitheaters playing for crowds of people that, you know, that none of this seems real. I'm still mm -hmm. pinching myself every day, making sure that, you know, we're, I'm not going to wake up and it's all, all going to disappear, but I'm, I'm getting to take everything that I love, everything that I've watched so many people have the opportunity to do and I'm getting to use it. They go right next to one of my country idols and play these shows and give it all I got. And that's that's something that I, it's hard to put into words. I still stu stumble and stutter thinking about it because it's, it's just unreal. Now, this weekend, too, you guys have their step-by-step -step tour uh, going on, too, as well. And this weekend, uh, Florence, South Carolina. And, of course, next week, I mean, Anaheim and Bakersfield, you get the little California two-step out there. Uh, hometown of Chattanooga, and it uh, looks like two out of three there in uh, in February, too. Evansville, I mean, this is a huge uh, deal for you coming back, not just on the uh, Tim McGraw tour with the other fantastic talent, but your own step-by-step -step tour, right? Yes, sir. It's uh, been an ongoing tour that we've carried from the summer on to now, and we've, we've been very fortunate. So many people have connected with us ever since this all really got going, and we've been able to carry this show from where we're at here in Chattanooga to California, to Washington state, uh, even done some appearances out of country down in Cancun and Jamaica and to watch how this music has grown and the places it's taken us places that we otherwise, you know, might've never gone or had a reason to go to. That's, it's insane because we've, mm -hmm. we've met so many great people connected and made so many good connections. Um, uh, with countless individuals that have brought us to these venues and it's, it's something special and it's, it's only getting better. We're only getting to grow it. And I'm just thankful for every, every opportunity we've gotten on the road. Awesome. Uh, can it. you, yeah. Can you give us a little taste of what everyone can expect when they see you on the road? Uh, a little taste of what everyone can expect when they see me on the road. You're going to hear me <laughs> hollering yeehaw a lot. Uh, yeehaw. All um, right. Because we got a hat right now that's called it says "Bringing Yeehaw Back." I don't think we uh, we hear <laughs> nice. the music as we used to, but uh, you, you're going to hear Yeehaw a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm usually a one man show for a lot of these. It's me and a guitar, and I'm I'm trying to trying to make sure we keep the energy as high as we can. So you're going <laughs> to see me jumping and carrying on, telling stories behind the songs, which that that's what I love. I love connecting with folks and really finding you know how the song relates to different people and it's it's awesome because I get to see something that I can like all these songs are like my babies. They're they're something that I take a lot of pride in. And when we share them out with the world and people come up and say, hey, man, look, you know, your, your song step by step connected with me because of this connection with my my kids or mm -hmm. your song Destiny hit me because I had one of those, you know, life altering 
uh, moments that really kind of changed things for me. And when people share those stories, it hits you in the heart and it shows that for me, it makes it worth it. It shows why we write music, why we, why we play these shows and it's to really connect with people and give them something that can, they can say, look, this song might not be about me, but for me, it's about me. This is what I'm going through. And it, it's, it's really hit me in the heart. So that's special. And you can tell just with you performing here live on the backstage pass, that is all you need with the guitar and the vocal. I mean, I'm sure a band would be amazing, but you <laughs> you can tell you are very prideful of your mm -hmm. songs and want to get the these heartfelt words out. And so I encourage people to check out his schedule on the website, brandondavis.com, mm -hmm. and go find him on tour. Yeah, definitely get those tour dates. I mentioned a few of them there. The top of the show, brandondavismusic.com is the place to go out there and uh, make sure you get all those tour dates and tickets for Brandon's tour and the Tim McGraw tour, which starts April 29th in Rogers, Arkansas. Uh, hey, let's play another. Yes. We'll come back, do some rapid fire. I do want to ask you about, uh, I loved it. Minus you was another great one. And then of course, diving into a little holiday music out there. Uh, one more Christmas Eve came out uh, November 26th. So that's another one that every artist seems to do their own kind of Christmas thing. Now I'm enjoying that particular side of them more and more, which is cool out there and doing his own thing with uh, one more Christmas Eve. So uh, let's do uh Another one here. We'll come back one. and uh, talk a little more. I saw well, we'll on, on this one. This, okay. this is one that not very many people have heard. Uh, not just be the few <laughs> that I wrote it with, but uh, this oh. song is this song is called "Lightning in a Mason Jar." All right, here we go. In a place like this, the kind of thing that don't exist. Just one kiss and knock you to the floor. He said, Son, you're gonna get burned. Cause I've seen pride and ego's hurt. But his whiskey whispers, What you waiting for? He says, You might shoot you down, but it's worth a shot. And if you do wrong, you better hold on to what you got. Cause lightning don't strike twice, so you better get it right. The first time he caught, second time won't come around. Like a rolling storm pouring rain, the gap says so that can't be tamed. Like a Bronco song, she's a hard one to tie down. She's a once in a lifetime shot to the heart, just like catching lightning in a mason jar. She don't pay no mind to pick up lines, no way she'll take that glass of wine, cause she's got bourbon burning in her veins. She'll call you out on your BS, plays the best damn game of hard to get. And if you don't ask her to dance, you better wait till they play George Strait. Cause lightning don't strike twice, so you better get it right. The first time it costs, second time won't come around. Like a rolling storm pouring rain. Yep, says so they can be tamed Like a Bronco song, she's a hard one to tie down She's a once in a lifetime shot to the heart Just like catching a lightning in a mason jar If you made it to the end of the night, you better order time. Cause lightning don't strike twice, so you better get it right. The first time in cause the second time won't come around. Like a rolling storm pouring rain, the gift says so the can't be tamed. Like a Bronco song, she's a hard one to tie down. She's a once in a lifetime shot to the heart. They need on shooting star in the dark, just like it. 
The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Kraus, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And just like that, we are back here on the Backstage Pass with my co-host, Brandon Morell. And uh, here's where we get to interview all sorts of talent, which, of course, we love to do, especially when we find somebody like this. Brandon Davis here singing a new song for us, almost a sneak peek, called Lightning in a Mason Jar. Is that the right title? Yes, sir. And, of course, yeah, thank you. <laughs> what? I said yes, ma'am. I said sir. I apologize. Oh, it's it's great. I can whatever you want to call me. That was a great song. And um, we have uh, amazing sponsors. So uh, thank you to Mitch Max and of course Bangtel Whis Whiskey and Hank Junior Productions for uh, all the support and uh, being our sponsors. And then we did want to ask you about a new song. But before we get to that, Lightning in a Mason Jar. Tell us about that. You know, when did you write it? How well, new is uh, it? We just we just wrote this probably three weeks ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it was, wow! Uh, me and a buddy of mine named Rusty Page, and another friend of ours from that just moved down to Nashville from up north, named he goes by Schmidt. Cool. But um, two really great songwriters, and this one was sitting on a list of titles. We were trying to find one that just really, really caught our eye, but also caught our ear, and that we really felt we could dive into. And lightning in a mason jar to me, it it's it's catching that one thing that you don't ever think you're going to get. And mm -hmm. for me, that was getting a hold of my wife. You know, being able to say that that's mine for the rest of my life, that was my lightning in a mason jar. And this song really just brings out the fact that, you know, if you get a hold of that once-in-a-lifetime chance, that once-in-a-lifetime person, don't let go. Hold on to it for all you got and ride it out because it's, it's mm -hmm. worth it and you're not going to get a second chance at it. Love it's a perfect that. title. And that's what, as you're singing it too, and as I listen to the version, man, that you got, uh, like I said, if I was in uh, Florence, South Carolina this weekend, I'd be one to have a front row seat there and attend that concert, no doubt. And on the step by step tour, I'd be <laughs> out there and definitely. I know that's that's going to be uh, in some type of set uh, later on down the line for you, no doubt. It's a hell of a song. Hey, tell me about another one too, single you guys keep busy last year, minus you, because I thought it really brought out great vocals you had too and it told a great story too for, for minus you so me and sam coon and josh bricker wrote that one and when we sat down that afternoon we were we were in the mood for something that really got us kind of out of our out of our normal wheelhouse and for me you know i, I write a lot about family and i write a lot about everything that has kind of made me who i am mm -hmm. but the fact of the matter is we all have you know, loves that we lost, breakups, and in a small town, a breakup, it can be the hardest thing you can go through because when you're in a small town, literally everybody knows everybody. You're going to see that person, whether you like it or not, or maybe you don't, and everything you see is making you think of them. And 
I was saying, look, the, let, the last thing I can think of seeing in a small town, if someone's driving off, I can just see a car taking off and you see in the, you see in the city limit sign as, as you're leaving out. And he's like, man, Rick, my buddy Bricker said, I, I can just picture somebody throwing beer cans. He's like a, a beer battered city limit sign. I was like, but what if it ain't just city limit sign? Like, what if it's the population that's showing up on there? Like you got such a small town, they can keep count of the population right there on the sign. It says, okay, well, this is population like 492 minus you because she just took mm-hmm. off. And that, that's where it landed. And it became our, our take it, giving everybody that small town breakup anthem. It, it's got, uh, <laughs> it's got feel, man. It's just down home, good, good ass country music. And nothing wrong with that too, as well. And your vocals, uh, you hit it, you hit it uh, spot on, no doubt. All right. And we'll start rapid fire with this as we, we wrap up, do a few more questions. Cause I love, we just passed the holiday season and I think everybody would want one more Christmas Eve. Um, like that second guys had to do that but uh you guys put that out toward the end of november i believe right there after thanksgiving tell me about this was uh, the holiday music kind of a by design was it something you kind of always wanted to do for this song yes and Mm -hmm. i never really had an opportunity to do anything with it and when we first got started recording and releasing songs we didn't have enough time to get it together Mm -hmm. uh this past christmas rolled around and i felt like this was an opportunity we needed to take while we had the op- the actual chance to get it out there and had the time to devote to it because it's a story that has been sitting, you know, in my back pocket or on my phone for however long. And where it all stemmed from was 2015, 2016, somewhere in there. I saw a video that popped up on a news feed and it was a local news station saying they were interviewing a Santa Claus that was going around to local children's hospitals and he wanted to uh, ask each one of them, which were, they were all cancer patients, what they wanted for Christmas. And all these kids, even though they're in this horrible time of their life, they're still giving Santa like a kid answer. They, they want a, they want a pony or they want a, a new video game. They want the Barbie doll they've been dreaming about. But this one little kid, all he wanted was a chance to have one more Christmas Eve with his parents. And when the Santa says this on camera, he's bawling, I'm bawling, the newscaster's yeah. bawling. And all I could think was, God, that, that's, I just want to be able to share it. Like, I want to share this moment with whoever I can through this song. And I didn't think back then that that many people were ever going to get to hear it. And when I finally had the chance to put out a Christmas song this year, uh-huh. or this past year, I said, look, this is the one. Because they, they, I had a lot of people ask me, well, you're putting out a Christmas song. Which which one are you planning on covering? And I was like, I, I don't think I want to cover one. I was like, I've got uh-huh. one that's too special not to share. And... I know the the story in it's deep and there's a lot of people that connect with it in different ways. And I'm just, I'm thankful that so many people now have had the chance to, to feel this song. Like I feel it. It's, it's, it's a great song. What you got for a uh, rapid fire? Cause uh, my next one, I'm about to ask you, I won't even think about this super bowl 56. I'm asking about a super bowl oh. prediction, but what, what do you got first? I'm just so sad. I'm from Wisconsin, so I just don't even want to hear about the Super Bowl. I didn't see that coming either. Uh, (laughs) But uh, my, so I got asked this question actually earlier today, and I totally told them I was going to steal this. If we had a a Mount Rushmore was being built in Nashville, and it was going to be country artists, and Brandon Davis was the person that decided what faces, what four faces are going to be up, what's going to be up? For the Nashville Ooh. Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I literally like loved this. I was like, I have to. <laughs> would I would You got this. With, <laughs> I would start with Did we look yes, we froze up there a little bit there. All right, there we go. We got it back. Okay, you're back. We got you back. Yep. We're we're raining out here, so I, I apologize. Oh, Merle good. Haggard, I'm I'm gonna keep this country. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put Merle Haggard up there. Ah, uh, I'm probably going to. I'm gonna slide. So we got Merle waiting on the other three faces there too. So he's got a little rain. There he goes. We got you, okay. Merle. Merle. Sorry, got Merle. Uh, you Merle. Good? We're gonna go with. George Jones put the possum right up there next mm-hmm. to the hag. The possum. <laughs> uh, let's see. Man, you got you got me torn here. 
It's it's all personal. Like everyone, he said, everyone has a different answer. It's just personal. Uh, so we got Merle, we got the possum. I'm probably gonna have to. Uh, hmm. Let's slide. Let's slide Jamie Johnson up there too. Got to get right. got to get some beard action going because that man's a storyteller through and through. Yes. <laughs> yes. And. Uh, We'll put put old Tim McGraw himself there on the end because I'm telling you what, man is uh, the man's definitely changed my life for you know more ways than one, more than just music. Mm -hmm. So let's get that black cowboy hat sliding up to to kind of wrap it all together. Awesome. I like that. I like awesome. that. It's the Route Rush more for Brandon Davis, and that's I like great. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Four four of the best in the business, no doubt. All right, Super Bowl prediction. Uh, one team expected to be there. One team did not. Uh, my team got knocked out. You see my hat. She mentioned she's from Wisconsin, so the Packer fan. So I am uh, still shocked the Bengals got there. But, uh, hey, this is the second time it's been on a home field in Los Angeles. Uh, what's, yeah. what's kind of feel the gut feeling telling you right now? Hmm. You know, I, I, I would love to give you a statistical answer because <laughs> I, I, I would love to actually say that I know what I'm talking about. But – I've, I've always been more of an avid baseball fan than I am a football fan. Uh -huh. And I'm kind of split because I, okay. I, I couldn't, I couldn't speak to either team. I'm not a, not the, I'm a Titans fan, obviously. No. But I've been hearing from a I'm lot a, of I'm people. I'm going to slide right down the middle with a split decision. Right. Okay. The coin. I'm good with that. <laughs> I've been hearing a lot of people say the Bengals and I, I don't know. I don't know. Well. I lost money on the Titans two weeks ago, if that tell you anything right there. So I did a little on that one. So me and a buddy of mine. But you know, they let me down and toward the Dallas Cowboys. My team let me down, Cardinals. So you know, it's it's you know, Packers let me down. I lost you know hundred bucks in the last few weeks. But you know, it's yeah, whatever. So it's play money. Get to just go do something like going to casino and pull a jackpot and sticking money in the machine too. So but uh we'll just have to watch the Ozarks afterwards, you know what I mean? Well you just finished that too, and that was Amazing. Hey, for you, speaking of watching great series, uh, so many out there, what have you kind of been into with, with the binge watching or have you been into anything out there? Well, I've been uh, definitely following up on the 1883 stuff and catching up on my Yellowstone mm -hmm. because I, I nice. fell behind on Yellowstone for a good bit. And when, when you get kids in bed, you think that you got all the time in the world after that to like do what you want to do, like bed, bedtime for them. Oh, it's, mm -hmm. it's adult time for us. We can finally kick back and enjoy ourselves but i figured out real quick that bedtime for them if we're not busy trying to get something done usually about 10 or 15 minutes into a show i'm just like well maybe it's maybe it's my bedtime too <laughs> maybe i might pass out for a bit but definitely uh i'm, all, I'm also a big superhero nut so I, I keep up with uh the superman and lois show that's on the cw and um anything that has to do with dc comics so oh yeah Yep, there's mm -hmm. some new good stuff coming out this year. All right, one final one. What you got? Hmm. What? You, there's no doubt about it that you have a knack for songwriting and telling a story. Do you remember what the first song that you wrote was about? Or maybe the title of it? Oh, yeah. You do? Okay, yeah. what? <laughs> I was so I was in eighth grade, two thousand seven. I was a huge Dukes of Hazards fan. Okay. And uh, my dad. We've had John Schneider on the show. We on did. The show. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Got man. I, I got to. I got to meet. I didn't get to meet John yet, but I've gotten to meet uh, Cletus off the show. I can't remember his real name. Save my oh, life. And big I got, fan over here. And I got <laughs> got to meet old Roscoe P. Coltrane one time. Uh, <laughs> but. Man, uh, the very first song I wrote since I was such a big Dukes Hazard fan was called Big Moonshine Running Son of a Guns. Big it was, Moonshine Running Son oh, of a Guns. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. It was, <laughs> that sounds it, fun. Fun, but rough. Yeah, I, I, I look back at – you look back at what you do early early on when you're trying to learn how to do something, especially mm -hmm. songwriting, and you play it back to yourself, and you, you just kind of put your face yeah. in your hand, and you're like, oh, what were you thinking? <laughs> what 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 popped in your head that this was a good idea? But I mean that one, yeah, it was yeah. fun. It was upbeat, and it for an eighth grader that was <laughs> into the Duke boys. That that's it told what I was thinking about. So 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. We got a couple of people saying that's yeah. kind of a mouthful title here. <laughs> that's you funny. better believe it. You should have heard. You should have heard it sung. Huh? <laughs> I remember from it, of course. I love uh, it. Too. Maybe that song will have the light of day at some point. We'll see. We'll see. Bring it, bring it back, no doubt. Well, I tell you what. Uh, Hell of a story, man. Uh, perseverance is the key word, no doubt about it, brother. You've you've, you've you know fought through hell and come back stronger. And I guess the old saying is, "What don't what doesn't kill us makes us stronger in life." And, and all the music we've talked about today is out there for uh, digital downloads. And of mm-hmm. course, go uh, support Brandon at brandondavismusic.com and uh, check out uh, the EP and of course all the songs we had discussed today on the show. Brandon, appreciate the time. Best of luck on the step by step tour, and of yes. course the tour with uh, Tim McGraw coming up April 29th at Rogers, Arkansas. And continuing on with 18 more fantastic shows. Uh, man, as soon as uh, some new stuff comes out, uh, all, all the time, brother, you come back anytime and talk to us and uh, share the new music with us. And, of course, uh, share how the tour went. We appreciate you so much. Hey, I appreciate y'all. And for anyone who's wondering about new music, we've uh, got a song dropping on the Day of Love, February 14th on Valentine's Day. we got a song called Hearts Don't Rust. It's going to be dropping. And I uh, would love to have played that, but don't want to give too much away too soon. <laughs> but uh we've got that one it's actually going to be the title track of a debut album that's going to be okay. coming on the uh april 15th that's so right. looking, forward looking forward to it. to it and a lot of new music to bring on this tour and as well as uh hearing it out across this country with tim mcgraw so awesome. it's gonna be a lot of fun and we appreciate all that and love to have you back to talk about the, all the new music and of course the new album in april and uh, so much more Uh, They get bigger and brighter here on the show, and watch out for Brandon Davis uh, stepping on that Grand Ole Opry stage one day. I'm just going to make that prediction here on the backstage pass. I've done it before, and we've had a few get there just recently, too, as well. And actually, one of them was uh, Lanny Wilson. She just stepped on that stage not too long ago, and there's been some others that uh, I've projected to as well, no doubt. Brandon, appreciate the time, and of course, thanks to the sponsors. And tomorrow, Elizabeth Lyons joins us here on the uh, backstage pass next week, John Michael Montgomery, and a whole lot more coming up here in February. As we get ready for CRS, uh, John Ferry, the band Shenandoah, the artist Craig Campbell, Jesse G, the band Exile, Dallas Remington, and so much more at CRS 2022. Appreciate the sponsors and for Kirsty and the entire team. We'll talk to you tomorrow on the show on the backstage pass. Until then, have a uh, great, great night. Thank you, Alfred.